What's up, everybody? Today we're gonna to be talking about a little gem that's right there in that tank. Look at this vicious dog. Come here. Look at her. She's vicious. She took off somebody's hand. She just ate it. You're so vicious. Vicious pet balls. All right, let's look at the shrimp. Look at this dog. Here we go. All right, so the first thing I really need to tell you about this tank is it's a 50 gallon low boy. So it's four feet wide and two feet deep and 10 inches tall. That's it, 10 inches. Uh, you guys can see we have plenty of cherry shrimp in here. I started off with five. Uh, that's all I had when I first started was five. I now have hundreds upon hundreds and I bred thousands, but I've sold hundreds more. So uh, that's why we have, you know, I mean, you gotta dwindle your numbers some way, somehow, right? So. When you're looking for cherry shrimp, try and buy them locally because I'm sure somebody out there has them and they are super easy uh, to multiply or to, you know, get more of. Look at all of them. Uh, there are hundreds in here. I know there's a glare there from the light. Can't really do much about it. Let's get you up close here. <clears throat> this one right here, that's an Amano shrimp. Uh, I use them to clean up the algae in the tank because... Uh, while the cherry shrimp do eat algae, they just can't keep up. Amano shrimp are terrific for uh, getting rid of algae. So if you ever want to get rid of algae, you know, grab five of these, put them in your tank, and they will definitely clear it up. That's all they do is eat and eat and eat. All right. So right here we have some of the smaller ones. You can see like their colors are little faded. And then, uh, you know, we'll look over and we'll find a, a male. That's a male there. And this is a good looking little guy. I'm trying to show you this buried female. She's right there in the middle of all that. And she actually has eggs. They'll have the eggs up underneath their tail. And, you know, they'll gestate, I want to say, for like two weeks. I could be wrong. And then she'll release the eggs and then the the babies that come out are just kind of free floating for about five days and then they're actually able to swim and you know once they're able to swim around they can attach themselves to something and start eating on their own that's really cool everybody loves that and we got some more over here uh this plant that they're living in is uh java moss there's tons of it that piece there is probably two feet wide by about a foot and a half deep. It goes from the front and it's just about maybe four inches from the back and the tank's two feet deep. So, you know, that's a lot of java moss. If you want to breed a lot of shrimp, uh, you can use guppy grass, java moss like this. Or if you just have like a shrimp only tank, algae works. Uh, you can just literally flood that thing with light, get a, a bunch of algae built up. Put your shrimp in there and they will multiply like crazy. Uh, that's the other thing about cherry shrimp. Probably the easiest shrimp to breed. Uh, you will wind up with, I started with five. I'm now, I don't know, two and a half years into having these. And those five, it turned into thousands. But I, like I said, I bred so many that I, I've had to sell them. So I keep my numbers probably within 200 or so, I'd say. And this is just one tank. I have several tanks in the out here that, uh, you know, several tanks that have the uh, shrimp in them, shrimp only tanks, that kind of stuff. So uh, this is just one. I'd say there's probably a good 200 in this tank. Uh, they're literally littered. They're everywhere. Um, so uh, right there, you're going to see that really deep, dark colored one in the center there. I know you can't really get a good look at her, but that's a female. Uh, these other guys here, these are males uh, right above her. And it's easier to tell the males are a lot more slender. The females are kind of a fatter, fatter looking things. Man, I wish I could get you some shots of some of these that are in here. They're just giant females. I have sitting there as you can see. Well, you can sort of see. I don't have much of a glare there so if you want to start a cherry shrimp colony it's very simple 
Grab you about five of them, and before you know it, you'll have hundreds of them. Really, really easy to breed. Um, that's number one. Let's talk about tank mates. What's in here with them? I have Cory Cats. We have Nerite Snails, like that thing there in the corner. Uh, Mystery Snails, because, you know, I have algae like crazy in this tank. See all the algae on that plant? A lot of algae. Uh, more Corys. I've got some Guppies in here with them. And I don't know where they are, but I've got some blue-eyed spotted uh, rainbow fish in here. Uh, I don't see any of those either. But you can see there are tons of Corys. Uh, the Corys, for the most part, leave the shrimp alone. Um, they'll run them off every once in a while, but that's really the worst of it. Uh, shrimp are able to get away. And since these guys are bottom feeders, uh, the column feeders, the guys that are feeding there in the middle, like the guppies and that kind of stuff, they will typically, you know, snag a few of the babies as they're, you know, right before they're able to swim off. Uh, but that's okay because you're going to be producing hundreds and hundreds of these things. Just be patient. And we can see right here is a nice mystery snail. That's an albino. And they call them the albino because their bodies are white. Pretty cool. Little nearite snail there swimming off. As far as filtration goes, uh, try and keep the flow lighter. Uh, you don't want to go crazy with the flow. Uh, something like a sponge filter like I have on here. Even just some, you know, these little tiny flu balls that I run in there. It moves the water, but it's it's not to the point where it's blowing shrimp all over the place or your plants or any of that stuff. Uh, you want adequate filtration. They do well in high flow too, don't get me wrong. But, uh, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing, you mean girl? Poor girl got her butt kicked by the neighbor's dog. Uh, we had to take her to the vet, the whole nine. Anyway, um... What else were we going to tell you about these guys? A lot of fun. Uh, always doing something. They're very active. You can see these guys are always moving around, always eating. That's all they do. Uh, they eat biofilm and algae. That's it. So if you have a shrimp-only tank, just put some plants in it. I, I've had a shrimp-only tank for years, and I've never fed it once. And all the shrimp look just like this. Pretty cool, huh? So all you need are plants, um, doesn't matter what kind, or just take that tank, man, and flood it with light, get some algae built up in it, put the shrimp in there, and you will have a ton. Pregnant female guppy there swimming by. Um, as far as plants, it, it's really simple. Anything that balls up like this, uh, Java, uh, Java moss, uh, guppy grass. Oh, gosh, there's so many. Uh, you can look around, you'll find balls of plants that'll do this. Uh, all types of mosses that do this that are super easy to grow. And that's kind of what you're going to want to use for these things. Other than that, there's not really much more I can tell you other than to breed them, just add water. Literally, just add water. Uh, cherry shrimp are neo neocardinia. Uh, there's several species of neocardinia. Uh, these are really forgiving as far as water parameters, whether you have a pH of 6 or in my case where I have a pH of 7.8 to 8, just depends on the month, uh, goes up and down. You can, you can keep these and breed them successfully. <laughs> Literally just add water. All right, guys, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the button right there, and we will talk to you all later. Peace. Say bye.